Thank you. Nice to be here. Nice to be anywhere that isn't my day job. I, uh, I work for a water company. Can't tell you which one, but it's in a Thames area. <laughs> the other day, right, I had to go to a sewage treatment plant in Slough. You ever been to a shit town to look at shit? <laughs> I had to go see the IT guy the other day. Very stereotypical looking man. He had ponytail, glasses, leather jacket. And on the jacket, he had some badges. One of the badges really caught my attention. It said, I support sex workers. And I thought, I wonder if he means financially. <laughs> so what other support is there? Do you know what I mean? Emotional, moral, standing in the corner. Suck that cock. <laughs> My job's gonna go to AI one day, I'm very aware of that. My manager was like, hey Carl, we've got this new software, it's gonna half your workload. And at the same time, my girlfriend texts me, asks if I could pick up some batteries for a vibrator. And I thought, do I serve a purpose for anyone? <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend actually uh, wants to have a kid um, with me. Um, <laughs> It's not that I don't want to have a kid, it's just how do you know what you want out of life? One day I want to have a child, next day I want to travel the world. How do you combine those things? So I googled it, and uh, now I'm on a watch list for child trafficking. <laughs> hey, I remember, right, being 21, sweating in a rave, gurning my tits off. And now I'm 33, sweating in a gym, trying to burn these tits off. <laughs> Where'd you get these tits? I've made too much eye contact with you when I said that, sorry. That was, that was awkward. As a man, right, I think you get tits from being in a relationship, because like me and my girlfriend were kind of like a foodie couple. Essentially our relationship is I love you, you, you love me, now let's get fat so we can't run away from each other. And she's a curvy girl, right? But she looks good curvy, you know, she's voluptuous, woman, naked, I'm all like soft and airy. Like. Naked, I look like someone's got a black cat and rubbed it on raw chicken. <laughs> Take a moment to visualise, it's fine. <laughs> it's a weird thing to do as well, isn't it? Why would you do that? <laughs> I was uh, around my mum's house last weekend, going through the garage, going through some old stuff, and I found an old box of CDs. Remember CDs? I found the first album that I ever bought, right? Eminem, the Slim Shady LP. Right? I was obsessed with this album in primary school. I used to listen to it all the time. I wanted to be Eminem. And I remember thinking back then, if I'm going to be Eminem, I'm going to need some black friends. <laughs> and there were two black kids in my class, right? Piero and Leon. Piero had short curly hair, Leon had cornrows. And one lunchtime, I went up to them and said, hey fellas, I've got an idea. I'll be Eminem, you be Dr. Dre, and you be Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and they beat the fuck out of me. <laughs> around that time I started listening to Coldplay. <laughs> you find your lane in life, you know, you know? You need to, you need to know where you stand. It was a good moment. <laughs> Have you guys noticed this, right? Every single time a member of the royal family dies, so does a famous rapper. So we're like, when Prince Philip died, so did DMX. Prince Philip and DMX got some similarities. Both, uh, both like dogs, both said a lot of politically incorrect shit. You know, they could have been mates. When the Queen died, so did Coolio. Similarity between the Queen and Coolio, never changed their haircut. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, when Andrew dies, R. Kelly. <laughs> Get out of here. R. Kelly also makes me laugh because his name sounds like a northern dad referring to a family member. Like, R. Kelly? <laughs> you know R. Kelly. <laughs> Remix ignition. No. <laughs> yeah, do you remember uh, the, during the Queen's uh, Jubilee, or the, like, the last Jubilee, obviously the last Jubilee, anyway, <laughs> yeah, when uh, the palace issued a statement saying that Andrew wasn't going to be there? And uh, this made me realise just how British the royal family really are. Because we've all got that one uncle who's like, no longer invited to the barbecue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your mum tries to like play it down on the family WhatsApp group. She's like, Uncle Terry's not coming because he's got COVID. <laughs> nah, mum, Uncle Terry's not coming because he's a nonce. <laughs> Speaking of nonces, um, sounded like someone was wanking over there. I think it was clapping. I want... <laughs> Speaking of nonces, um, I went to Catholic school. Um, 